This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Here's our real main event now. It's the ECW slash WCW team of the Alliance, which is comprised of the Dudley boys, Rhino, Diamond Dallas Page, and Booker T. Uh, so we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five different guys on that side. And of course, on the other side, it's Steve Austin, Kurt Angle, Chris Jericho, Undertaker, and Kane. Undertaker's uh, going to be nursing a few injuries here. Obviously, Austin and Angle are playing hurt. So it feels like it'll be heavily relying on Jericho and Kane coming in. They get a ton of time too. It is a WWF main event. So it's 29 minutes and three seconds, but Meltzer didn't love it. He says everyone worked hard and this was good, but not the caliber of most WWF main events. Austin and angle in particular got huge reactions. When they came out, Vince, Shane, Paul Heyman, and Stephanie were all brought out to ringside, but until the finish, none played a part in the match. Austin didn't look good as far as moving early, but seemed to get it going as the match got going. He picked his spots and actually did more than I figured he would. He did a superplex off the top to Rhino early on, and the match would have been better served being a little shorter as it seemed to drag in the middle. Austin tagged in at 11 minutes and kicked the hell out of Booker. Austin even did a suplex on the floor to Booker and Jim Ross went off on WCW and ECW here. He said that WCW was an organization that was dormant for years and that ECW created a style that was career shortening. Any, any of that, uh, any of that untrue? Nope. I mean, uh, I'm a Homer. Of course. Yeah. You're the, supposed to be uh, pulling for the WWF. Exactly. Uh, and it wasn't, no, oh, he buried these guys. Right, right, right. Easy pal. You know, uh, I, I represented my role with the, with the team that I was playing on. Sure. So uh, that's kind of where that was, but I was, I'm like Meltzer. I, I thought I didn't know how much Austin and Kurt would have in, have the ability to do because of their injuries. And they both did a whole hell of a lot more than I thought they might, or might be able to do. That's just their, once the adrenaline starts flowing, man, you got 17,000 fans there and you're in the main event. They're just something that if you're, if you're a main event level player, you just can't help yourself. And I thought that's what this was. I thought that was, a, I thought the whole presentation, that last match was pretty damn good. There's an angle slam on Bubba and then an ankle lock on Booker, but Booker's going to kick angle off and he's going to bump into referee Mike Kyoto. So Mike goes down Vince McMahon, then grabs the title, throws it to Austin, but Shane gets the belt and hits Vince with it. Angle knocks Shane out of the ring and gives Booker the angle slam and has him in the ankle lock and Booker's tapping. But of course there's no referee here. Austin then makes his miraculous comeback, throwing Kyoto in the ring, but then he kicked angle and gave him a stunner and put Booker T on top and ordered the referee to count. The show ended with Austin in the ring, drinking beer with Shane, Stephanie and Heyman three and a half stars. So a lot to unpack here, as I like to say. <laughs> but we haven't learned our lesson, right? Like Austin's the biggest star in the business. WrestleMania 17 breaks every single record. We turn him heel in the main event and the business takes a nosedive. Yep. We pull the nose up with this invasion angle. So we think why not do it again? And we turn Austin heel again, even though Austin was technically a heel. Now he's waving the WWF banner. So he's a good guy and gets a thunderous pop. But at the end of the show, he turns his back on the WWF and joins the Alliance. Now I understand from a creative standpoint, you probably think we need a little more star power on that side of the ball. I get that, but man, it just feels like this was an opportunity to undo or perhaps misstep from WrestleMania. Was this something you think Austin would have pushed for? No, well, he still wanted to be a heel. Yeah. And Vince, as I said on this show, Conrad in meetings, I had with the three of us. And then pri private meetings with, with Vince, we owe him that Jr. We right. owe him the opportunity to, and I, he said, and his instincts have been pretty good at stone cold. So maybe he's onto something, maybe it'll be right place, right time. And it clicks. Uh, I just thought it was poor casting, IE booking. Uh, and I expressed myself to both guys, man to man, that, that, that I didn't, I didn't think this is going to work. You, it's hard in the pro wrestling business to build a viable 
money drawing baby face. Yeah. And when you find that person and you have that execution of, uh, of this function, you don't want to screw with it. Just make it stronger. And you do that by having stronger villains and, and the numbers game. And, and he put the baby face in jeopardy, but for God's sakes, changing back and forth or whatever, when it's working, uh, is what you, you want to play upon that. So, uh, but it was just two guys, Vince and Steve that didn't want to say, well, you know, we're not this, maybe this will do it. Maybe this will be the trick that it takes. But what people didn't understand was, is that Steve, uh, was beloved so much that even though he had little rough edges and he was coarse and the fingers and the beer and the cursing and all these things, uh, people loved him for that attitude. They wish they had that attitude. They live vicariously through him and to hell with the brands. I feel strongly that saving money is important. You know, if it's not something we worry about now, boy, we are really going to worry about it later. And I want to help you get out of debt faster and do it with cheaper monthly payments. I'm talking to you. If you're in a 30 year loan, now is the time to take years off of your loan. We're routinely helping our listeners cut five, 10, even 15 years off their loan. And you can do this without perfect credit with no money out of pocket. You've just got to start at savewithconrad.com. It's a color of your Jersey. So, uh, but you can make an argument. Well, they needed more depth and they needed more star power and all that stuff. You're getting star power from a guy that really can't wrestle full time. So what are we doing? It makes sense to me. So, and they're still buying his merchandise. There's nothing else to tell you. They're still buying his merch. Like it's going out of style. Like it's going yeah. to be obsolete Conrad. Yeah. So I don't know what it was a stubbornness. I think if you want to, if to cut to the, through the bullshit, I think it was just people being stubborn and saying, well, we can make this work. Sometimes you can't make things work if the audience doesn't want it to work. And they did not want it to work as it relates to Steve being this hated villain where I want to pay my money to come see stone Cold get the shit kicked out of him. That never crossed the fans mind in my estimation. Let's take a look at where the business was. Uh, Royal Rumble 01, 625,000 by. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com.